All right, let's get going with our buddy Jim Salisbury. Our uh, dear friend is back joining us yet again. It is Tuesday. It's Jim Day. Um, Jim, <laughs> yesterday, not a great finish for the Phillies. Uh, of course, another game they jumped out early. They've been doing a tremendous job outscoring opponents in the first inning. It felt like the game was going well, that they could really put the pressure on the Angels, who have been struggling. And then Sir Anthony Dominguez took the mound. Not a great performance for him. Uh, what, would, what are your thoughts on the options that the Phillies have for how they should go about moving forward utilizing Sir Anthony? Arm fatigue. <laughs> what did you say, Jamie? Arm fatigue, IL, Lehigh Valley, fake an injury, <laughs> get down there. <laughs> well, um, you know, the, the former Mets GM got in some trouble for uh, making up injuries and, and <laughs> putting guys on the uh, IL a couple of years ago. Um, but I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I don't think they're there yet. Um, maybe, you know, you know, he's got five years of service time, so you're not going to send him to the minors Um I've heard people kind of suggest that, but he had a really good outing the time before in San Diego. Um, but I, I think you can work on him here. Um, he's throwing 96, 98. It leads me to believe that he's not injured. I mean, that's, it's, that's pumping it pretty good. Uh, usually velocity will tell you if a, a guy is injured. I just, you know, watching that game last night, it just seems like, I mean, his confidence is down. And that's going to happen anytime you're not having success. Your confidence is, is going to wane. Uh, that's just human nature. You do something well, you're going to be confident. And you need confidence to execute pitches and to, to be a good baseball player, to be a good, good athlete. Um, I, I think it kind of is probably mechanical. And, and I'm not a pitching coach, but, you know, I watched some of his misses. Last night, for, for example, you know, he'd, he'd miss up and in on a righty, um, flying open maybe. And then he'd try to overcompensate and he'd pull one away to a righty. So he's missing up here, he's missing down there, almost like he's trying to hypercorrect. So it just seems like he's in a mix up, maybe mechanically. And I think that would probably be something maybe they could go to work on. Um, in bullpen settings, you know, at 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, you know, you maybe you give him, he's not available a couple of nights and you try to work some things. Uh, but it is, it is um, kind of a mystery. It's a little troubling because he's an important guy. We've seen what he can do in some postseason. It's been dynamic. Um, but, you know, guys are getting better swings on him. Uh, the opponent's batting average is, is really high. The... Um, um, the opponent's OPS is really high. I mean, he doesn't seem to be instilling fear into a lot of hitters. And, you know, that wild pitch last night was a turning point. And there was a lot to that wild pitch, uh, in my opinion. I mean, you know, they were one strike away from getting out of that inning. And he uncorks that wild pitch. Stubbs is setting up um, upstairs in the strike zone. He wants a high strike out of the strike zone pretty much, you know, at the top or out. Um, almost looked like he was up and in, and the pitch missed, missed blown away. Uh, he really missed his spot badly. Uh, and, you know, with the new way guys catch on one knee, it's impossible for Stubbs to get to that ball and smother it. Um, and then they had a mental breakdown in the infield. Somebody's got to back that up to pre uh, prevent Mike Trout from coming around and and uh, moving up two bases. So, yeah, it's a head scratcher because uh, Sir Anthony is a real important guy uh, for this roster, but uh, I don't know what the remedial action is. He needs some success and to rebuild his confidence. My guess is it probably starts, you know, at the big league level with some work in the bullpen because um, I just haven't seen indications that he's hurt. But again, you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, things can come out of nowhere, as you suggest, so they could try to <laughs> remedy some things. So we will see. Uh, so, Jim, the um, Spencer Turnbull, uh, we're getting our last look again uh, as a starter here. Uh, it's a one-week opportunity because of the way the schedule goes. 
Is it safe to presume that Spencer Turnbull is probably going to take over the Sir Anthony Dominguez role of, uh, I don't want to say middle relief, but like the non-high leverage kind of in-between guy there? Do you think he's going to just slide in and, and kind of take that role? Uh, I think they, you know, he's built a workload, so they probably envision him as a multi-inning uh, middle guy. Um, I mean, I thought in a lot of ways that situation for Sir Anthony last night was leverage. What, what inning was it? Seventh inning? Seventh, yeah. That yeah. was a, that was a decent leverage, yeah. It was four to four. Yeah. Seventh inning. Um, hugely important inning. I thought that was leverage. So I think they'll probably try to utilize him, you know, build on the fact that he's 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 developed a, a bit of a workload here and he can give you uh four, five, six outs if you need him. Uh, maybe he becomes a piggyback situation uh, at times, not cast in stone, but at times with a guy like Christopher Sanchez or Taiwan Walker, um, who, you know, neither one of those guys are uh, pitching deeply into games. So I think there's a lot of ways you can utilize them. I think it's very interesting to give him another start. Um, makes a lot of sense to me. Hey, why not ride a hot hand a little longer and give uh, Wheeler one extra day? and NOLA two extra days um, because, I mean, this is a team that, you know, has its uh, its expectations on playing in October. And uh, you're probably going with a three-man rotation in October. Uh, and that's really the strength of your team, uh, Wheeler, NOLA, Suarez. And those three guys, I believe, are already in the top five in innings pitched in the National League. So I think if you can trim a little bit, uh, at the end, a little, little snip here, a little snip here makes the uh, Rose – stand a little taller at the end. So, um, and you have a hot hand like Spencer Turnbull who allows you to do that. So um, I would imagine they're not going to go six man. They're going six man this week, but they'll not do it um, consistently, but there'll be a time or two during the year where they drop a six man in to, to optimize rest for their big three. Cause like I said, the prize is in October for this team. And if you can save a bullet or two um, to keep those guys healthy, optimize health, it, it's a, it's a really good thing, but I, Turnbull's made a really excellent, excellent contribution. Two million bucks. He's almost already kind of that. paid for himself, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, he's going he's gonna to be an important guy tonight, and he's going to be an important guy all season long, and it's nice to know he can do it if you need him um, because there are question marks at the back of the rotation. So I am not fretting this, uh, this um, six men for five spots at all. I think it's a good thing. Definitely good problems to have, and it's it's interesting because as you bring up, Jim, we've all been talking about Spencer Turnbull connected to Taiwan Walker, but as you mentioned, it could also be in some way connected to Christopher Sanchez, who, as we saw against the Reds, was only able to go three innings and give it five runs. Last night did go five innings, but still has been struggling a little bit. Uh, so there's a lot of options there, and absolutely great problems to have, but as you Talk about, uh, you know, guys that are standing out. Let's shift gears a little bit off of the pitching staff and talk about one as he just racked up NL Player of the Week, following up Trey Turner, who did it last week. This is the first time the Phillies have had back-to-back -back Player of the Week honors since 2013. Alec Bohm has been phenomenal. He's been, you know, we've been hearing a lot about over the years how they've been trying to get him to work on different aspects of his at-bats, his third base play, and it feels like it's all clicking for him. I know in the chat people were calling him definitely an all-star. He's top of the league in a number of categories. Mm -hmm. What do you really think is his, is his ceiling? Because we've seen in the past, in April, his exit velocity, his, his numbers look good in, in April, the last two seasons, and then dropped down as opponents adjusted to him. Can he sustain this all season? Do you think he has the – this is the, the – the turning of the corner for Alec Bohm to solidify himself as that consistent top player, not only for the Phillies, but even across the league as a right-handed batter. Yeah, I do think we're seeing um, turning of the corner to use your expression. I think he has had sort of this breakout month, uh, month one of 2024. And there's no reason it can't be a breakout season um, because he is armed with talent. Uh, he's a good, good player got a good head on his shoulders um, and he has shown a great aptitude for improvement um, becoming better on the job. And now he is armed with that magic potion called confidence. Uh, he believes he belongs here. He believes he can do it. And we're seeing it on both sides of the ball. I know he made a tough error in where was it? San Diego the other day. It was a tough play. It could have gone either way. I, I think it was an error. Um, I think a big league third baseman probably makes it, but 
he will make that eventually because he's just going this way. He's getting better all the time. We've seen amazing growth from him over the last couple of years as, um, you know, a young man, a human being, and uh, and a baseball player. Um, I watch him. I, I love when he hits a double, stands on second base, and does this, and has a big smile on his face. I just I see a guy who's enjoying the heck out of playing the game. And, you know, in the spring of 2022, I didn't always see that. I didn't see spring training. I didn't see a guy who was enjoying playing the game. He was struggling. I think he sensed management was on the fence about him, whether he was going to go to AAA, whether Stott was going to be their opening day third baseman, which actually was a possibility briefly in 2022. I felt like he was not believing in himself, wondering if the organization believed in him. Well, now he believes in himself. The organization clearly believes in him. He's having, I mean, you look at the offensive stats in the National League, I think he's in the top five, like in every meaningful category. Mm -hmm. He's been a good hitter with runners on base since day one. He's got this real ability to slow things down. He's a very selective hitter. He was in college. That was one of the things that attracted to him and that attracted them to him in the draft, his selectivity. And um, it's really fun to watch kind of a guy blossom and explode and, and just put it all together. It is a lot of fun. He's having an unbelievable trip. Um, I think he's got 18 hits on this trip, half of them are extra base hits. So eight games in, he's got 18 hits, half are extra base hits. So 18 hits on, on a road trip. Um, to put that in perspective, Nick Castellanos has 19 hits for the season. So he's <laughs> having a hell of a trip. Um, he should really be proud of, of the way he's uh, putting things together because it's come through a lot of hard work. And I think the organization and their coaching staff, uh, Kevin Long uh, on the hitting side, Bobby Dickerson in the in the uh, on the infield play side, um, and you know, and just Rob Thompson and the front office for instilling a feeling of, hey, you're our guy, we believe in you, and now it's just manifesting. It's really cool to see. I heard you tell the story with uh, Todd and Ruben about 2022, and uh, you know, he was almost traded. You believe. Um, you know, well, I don't know if he, I don't know if he was almost traded. I mean, I, I teams I, were inquiring I, I and they were taking calls, I guess I should say. Yeah. And I think they do that on a lot of, a lot of guys. Um, but you know, uh, and I, I don't ever think they were in a situation where they were going to give away Alec Baum. If you were going to ever make him available for a trade, it was going to be for a significant piece of talent sure. in return, maybe some young pitching or something. Um, but, uh, there was, there was, too much chatter for me to not believe that their ears were open in the right deal uh, because he was an unproven player at the time. Now we're looking at a proven player or a player that is really um, speeding on an express train toward being proven. You know, you mentioned it's, all-star. Uh, Austin Riley all-star down in tomorrow, Atlanta. In uh, I was just going to say Austin Riley down in Atlanta kind of had some struggles early on. Uh, in his career, even went to left field a little bit, came back, and now these two are, I don't know, probably your top two third basemen in the NL All-Star uh, if they were to conduct votes today. I love Austin Riley. I mean, he's a hell of a kid, player. <laughs> hell of a player. I mean, just, and you know, he's a, you watch him have those uh, at-bats. He's very, you know, calm and, and uh, composed at the plate. He drives the ball. I mean, he's had a couple – three great years. I mean, he was a kid that was, could have been drafted as a pitcher too. Wow. Um, yeah. And he was, uh, yeah, if you're going to get, if you're going to, if you can get Austin Riley out of this, I mean, oof. <laughs> I don't know that he's there yet, but I certainly, I think Alec Bohm, you know, through five weeks, four or five weeks of the season is on a crash course with the all-star game. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, it's baseball, it's every day. Uh, and you got to do it over and over and over and be consistent. But a lot of good ingredients there with Alec Bowman. And one of them is, um, or two of them are, is, is aptitude to improve, his ability to improve and get better, um, and his 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 work ethic, his ability to look in the mirror and say, I need to get better here, and then, you know, go out and do it. Uh, he's got a good support system. He utilizes them well. And uh, he's he's been really probably their best player, right? Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, Alec and Trey have absolutely been on – uh, tear looking like all stars so far to start off the season. Before we let you go, Jim, have to ask though your thoughts because there are some guys that are still working things out. Nick Cassianos, we've seen coming out of his his slump. We've seen obviously Bryson Stott even had you know his first ever career multi homer game. They're working through it, but that there's that next tier of guys, Bryson and, and Nick. 
Yo, Johan Rojas, who we call Yoro. <clears throat> Just going to keep floating that nickname out there. If you want to. <laughs> Yoro. Um, that, are, that can give you a lot. But they're sh- struggling a bit right now with the consistency and possibly even the confidence. You know, what are your thoughts on that next group of guys outside of the usual suspects for the Phillies? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't even think Bryce Harper has really gotten hot yet. I think at some point we're going to look up and go, oh, wow, he just had a Bryce Harper month. So, you know, that's um, the way baseball season goes. you got nine men in your lineup, and, you know, you get three of them hot at one time and a couple warm, you're doing pretty good. And, you know, when another group kind of cools, uh, the other group warms up and, you know, everybody picks each other up. And the the ebbs and flows of a a baseball season and the ebbs and flows of a a lineup within that season – I still think Nick's going to get going and and have a, a good run here. Um, you know, he hit a home run in um, San Diego, uh, which was a good thing on Friday night. And then, you know, his, his at-bat seemed to be getting a little better. Stott had a two-home run game on Sunday. And Castellanos preceded both of those home runs with walks and long at-bats. And, you know, these guys, they're in the on-deck circle. They're on the bench. They're watching video. They're paying attention to what that pitcher is doing to batters before them. So, you know, Castellanos, I think, saw 15 pitches on those two walks before the Stott home runs. So that's that's a really great team concept. He, he helped Stott there. He helped Stott get a little bit of a read on, um, on Michael King, the pitcher. And I think that helped Stott. A little familiarity in the batter's box, hits two home runs. So in addition to – getting a glimpse at the pitcher from the on-deck circle. Um, They're they're grinding type at bats that can fatigue a pitcher just that much, just a teeny, teeny bit in the moment where he might make a little mistake and stock can jump on it. So um, though maybe it didn't show up in the box score that day, I thought Castellanos had really good at bats and really did a great job contributing to that win. So you can see incremental progress and, you know, it's a really getting hot here. Maybe that'll, he's a Miami guy. Maybe that'll get them going, you know, when they get home here. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, Jim, last one for you. Uh, Christopher Sanchez, uh, this might be my fault because I think two weeks ago <laughs> when you were on, uh, I said his changeup is becoming one of MLB's best pitches. Um, the two starts since his changeup has been a little off. Uh, road trip woes or something to keep an eye on going forward? Um, I think it's the Jamie Lynch jinx. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> Hit him, Renee. <laughs> I agree. I told him the same thing. He didn't knock yeah. on wood. <laughs> um, my bad. My bad, everyone. There you go. You know, I think I think there's a lot there. Um, we could talk for 10 minutes about that, and I'm sure you don't want to hear that. But, you know, it's a young pitcher. He's going to have his ups and downs. It's a changeup is a tough pitch. It's a, it's a touch and feel pitch. And, you know, some days it – might not feel good, and some days it might feel great. Uh, some days you're executing it, some days you're not. Um, you know, it's a fickle pitch. Uh, baseball's a fickle game. He's a young pitcher, still feeling things through. He's not going to be lights out every day, uh, but definitely had trouble. Uh, you could tell he didn't have it last night because yeah. he didn't throw it a lot, it didn't seem. It was a, yeah. the season low for him last yeah. night. It was a season low. Yeah, he didn't yeah. throw it a lot last night. Uh, started relying on that sinker. And, um, you know, it just it seemed to be one of those nights. But when he has it, I, I think he has the ability to get some swing and miss and then, you know, start it maybe right at the edge of the plate and try to fade it off the plate and really getting some swing and miss. But, um, you know, one of the things there, you kind of got to get ahead in the count, too. Um, you got to work ahead in the count uh, to to get to that pitch. I even think that was a problem for Sir, Sir Anthony, not getting ahead in the count at times, though he was uh, 0-2 when he threw the wild pitch. So um, it's a crazy thing, pitching. It's a crazy game, baseball. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think – I still think Sanchez is – you know, he's going to be this team's number four or five guy. There's a lot of ability there, but – you know, I, I don't think he's even close to a finished product. So some nights you're going to have games where he's going to need some run support and mm-hmm. uh, need some help from the bullpen. Um, and um, But that changeup, I'll come back. Your, your scouting report, I don't think was 
<laughs> you know, off base is pretty, pretty darn good, pretty darn good pitch, but you need other things to help set it up. Sure. You need some command, of the, especially command of the fastball. 